we have discussed about Harshwardhan. I told you that Harshwardhan, he tried to enter this area below Narmada, but the Chalukyas, the king of Chalukyas at that time, Pulkeshin II, he stopped him. He stopped Harshwardhana. So let me tell you who are Chalukyas, who are Pallavas. Pallavas. So these are two different empires. This is the region I am showing you for Chalukyas. This whole area. And this uh, shaded part is the core area. This is the core area of Chalukya Empire. I told you the outer boundary, the center one is the core area. Coming to the Pallavas, this yellow boundary is the outer boundary. And inside this, the shaded portion is the core area of the governance of Pallavas kingdom. Chalukyas, Pallavas. The capital of Chalukyas were Ehol. The Pallavas uh, capital were, it was Kanchipuram. One more thing is, if you see that their border is uh, overlapping. It's overlapping. So most of the time, the Chalukyas would attack uh, Pallavas towns. Palawas will attack Chalukya's town, prosperous town. So this was all happening at that time. Let me tell you again so that you understand better. We talked about Pallava and Chalukya. They were big, very big empires of southern India. I'm talking about South India, southern India. So Kanchipuram, the capital of Pallavas, and the region of this Kanchipuram. Or you can say the Pallavas region was Kanchipuram to the Kaveri Delta. To the Kaveri Delta. If you talk about area of uh, Chalukyas, it was at Ra Raichur Doab. This Doab means two, two rivers where they meet. For example, Punjab. Remember, Punjab. Ab means where river meet. So fire river meet, that is why it is that why that is why it's Punjab. Raichur Doab. Doab means two rivers. So what are these two rivers? Okay. These two rivers. We talked about uh, Palavas, it goes up to Kaviri Delta from Kanchipuram. What about uh, Chalukyas? The two rivers are Krishna and Tungabhadra. Chalukyas, Krishna and Tungabhadra. Please remember. I told you Chalukya. The capital was Ehol and it was a very important trading center. That means Vyapari Kendra, merchant, all trading is, you know, buying and selling is going on here. And then it was a religious center also. Number of temples, as I show you here, number of temples were being made, not even in Chalukya, but in Pallavas also. Okay. But these two empires, they were fighting, or not fighting, but raiding each other, raiding each other. And they were raiding the post prosperous towns. As I told you about Pulkeshin II, the famous best known Chalukya ruler was Pulkeshin. He stopped Harshwardhan. How do you know about, uh, how do we know about Pulkeshin? We know him from Prashasti, who wrote it? Ravi Kirti. Ravi Kirti wrote a Prashasti that is the in praise of Chalukya ruler Pulkeshin. That is how we know about Pulkeshin too. He gave us the idea and Pulkeshin got this kingdom from his uncle. From his uncle, that is Chacha. Chacha. Okay. Uncle. Now, Ravi Kriti gave us more account, more account. And he, he actually mentioned that Harsha, Harsh means happiness, Khushi, you know, joy, joy. But he said when Harsh tried to come down, Pulkeshin to stop, and that is how the Harsha was not so Harsha. He was, it was just a comic joke that he was not so happy, Harshavardhan. And these uh, Chalukyas also, you know, gone into Pallavas. The Pallavas have to take shelter behind a wall in Kanchipuram. 
So this all was happening, reading was going on. But the problem is, when you have two sons in, in a family, and these sons are not going together, they are fighting, that means there will be a problem in the family, the other people will take benefit. Same thing happened here, Pallavas and Chalukyas, Pallavas and Chalukyas, Chalukyas and Pallavas, they got weaker. Their, their victory was short-lived. Because after them, Rashkut, Rashkut and Chola dynasties, they came up. And these Palwas and Chalukyas, they have to give, give way to the strong and new rulers which were belonging to Rashtrakuta and Chola dynasties. Rashtrakuta and Chola dynasties. Now the question comes is, these are very big, big uh, kingdoms. How do they, how do the kings uh, administer them? Prashasan kaise karte the? See, let me tell you uh, a different aspect. The Jar Zoru Zameen, that is money, wife or girlfriend or land. These are the only thing for which people fight, people kill, do all the crimes. So these are very important things. Similarly, for all the kingdoms, the land was important. Land revenue was important. The money which was which they used to get from the land, this was important. Land revenue. And this was the important money source. This was the most important resource for these uh, kings administrator that time. And right now we have what block? We have corporators partial. The minimum level is block. But at that time, the basic unit for the administration prashasan was village. Village was the basic or you can say the lowest unit of administration, of governance. So what king did, he took so many steps, most of the kings they took uh, many steps in order to get the hold or support of those people who are quite powerful, who are economically sound, who are socially sound, who have all political and military strength. So how to get them uh, the support of these all people? Like Today also it happens. I'll give you an example later on. So what kings would do, the important administrative post, like we have the account officer right now. Today we have, say, IAS, IPS, like, you know, a big, big administrative post were hereditary, were hereditary. Nepotism was there. It was go from son to uh, father to son, then again father to son. So I'll take you take the name. I told you it will come Hari Sena. Hari Sena, he was Mahadandanayaka. That means today we have the uh, you know chief justice, justice like this. So Nayadhish, he was chief judicial officer at that time. And why? Why? Because it was hereditary. Hereditary. His father was also a chief judicial officer. His father was also a Mahadandanayaka, right? That is how the hereditary thing kings adopted. First thing. Second thing what they did, what steps did, did, did they take? One person can have many powers. They can hold many offices. For example, Har Harisena was chief judicial Mahadandanayaka. He was also K.A. Kumar Amatya. Kumar Amatya. What does it mean? He was a very important minister. Important mantri. What does it mean? See, today we have, uh, say, Modi ji is the Pradhan Mantri. Uh, he is a chief minister, the prime minister. And Nirmala Sitra Raman or you can say Harshwardhan, they have the cabinet position. Rajnath Singh, Amit Shah, they have. These are important ministers. So Hari Sena at that time was Mahadadanayaka. He was a Kumar Amatya. That means he was Sandhi Vigrahika. That is a minister of war and peace. So he was, the same name is this, Kumar Amatya means uh, important minister. But of which minister, which uh, you can say, which office he holds? War and peace minister. War and peace. Because it's all about, at that time it's all about war and peace. Two kingdoms were fighting to get the grab the land, all these. So 
he was kumaramatya sandhi vigrahika important minister of war and peace i hope you got the idea first was hereditary second one person can hold many offices okay most third thing is you know like everyone knows who is the who are important people who are the important people at that time nagar shreshti nagar shreshti that means who was having money chief banker or a merchant a trader a big trader a big banker who has good money right so today we have you know big bank managers like or holding the banks chief bank bankers and merchant these were nagar shreshti along with this sarthavaha sarthavaha or sarthavaha that means that at that time traders they would go from one place to another that is they go in caravans and those who were the leader of these caravans were sarthavaha so nagar shreshti one chief banker they are chief banker only merchant second sarthavaha merchant the merchant caravan leader these along with this we have others also for example uh, prathama kulika who are this those who are making uh, big big sculptures the chief of them the head of them was prathama kulika prathama kulika he was also given importance he was also powerful at that time then khayasthas or scribes like shivastavas like purvas so khayasthas okay these were also they also come under the important people and they would try the king would try to get them all the possible places and izzat and respect and all what was happening at that time right so what would happen sometimes if these people they were powerful people they want to they become so powerful they wanted to go away from means they want to have their self controlled uh, regime they want to to have a independent kingdom right now one more thing comes here is the new kind of army if we if we have talked about those uh, big big empires big kings or you can say the samrats emperors they would keep their own army they have elephants hathi they have chariots they have cavalry they have foot soldiers that means all this all which is required to fight a war they will have all these but if they have to attack a very big emperor big big regime what would they do they can't they cannot have a big army with the kings i am talking about they were not emperors i am talking about the kings pallavas arugyas etc so what do they do they will take they will take this samanta samanta who were samanta they will have their own army they will have own army and the king will take the help of this samanta they, they will also have elephants cavalry foot soldiers etc samanta so king will take the help of samanta and this samanta will provide all its resources to fight and in return the king will give them a one land one land and they'll say okay whatever revenue comes you take it samanta will take it but whenever i require you to go for war just give me all the troops you have so that is what a new kind of army was there at that time apart from this we are getting assemblies ideas from inscriptions like we have committees like we have sub committees we have different associations today so all the all those people who have like minded job or work or ideas or thinking they come together and they make an association so we have through the inscription a very clear cut idea especially in pallavas that there were associations or there were local assemblies let me tell you again pallavas especially we have got the inscription that we in the southern kingdoms i am talking about pallavas and chalukyas southern india kingdom so at that time assemblies were there so this included first one is i am telling you first one sabha 
सभा सभा वॉट इज सभा वॉट इज सभा दो और असेंबली एसोसिएशन ऑफ ब्राह्मीन हु आर लैंड ओनर्स मीन्स द लैंड ओनर्स हैविंग बिग बिग लैंड एंड दे वर ब्राह्मीन्स ऑल्सो ओके ब्राह्मीन्स बिग लैंड ओनर एंड दे विल हैव सब कमिटीज एंड दो सब कमिटीज विल लुक आफ्टर वेरियस वर्क लाइक द इरीगेशन सिंचाई फॉर एग्रीकल्चर एक्टिविटीज दे विल लुक फॉर Uh, for uh, different operations making uh, roads uh, taking care of the local temple all these work is being done by the sabha we have one more name in the inscription ur ur where we don't uh, there is no uh, big big uh, brahmin brahmin land owners means land owners were there but they were not brahmins land owners were there but they were not brahmins those assemblies were known as ur one more assembly name is nagaram 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 is an organization or an association of merchants traders those people who sell and uh, buy getting some profit right and at that time the normal people the ordinary people they also have certain stories they also being Uh, how how do we get the idea about them so most of the raya the poets writers they gave us account for example kalidas kalidas was in the court of king so whatever he saw or whatever he devised or whatever he has uh, you know portrayed in his mind about that what is happening so in the brahmans he was showing that they were speaking sanskrit in the same play Uh, same same uh, play the the local people were talking prakrit but one of his creation is abhigyana shakuntalam kalidas one of the greatest uh, his uh, creation is abhigyana shakuntalam what happened the story is something like that there was raja dushyant and he used to love shakuntala okay i'm making a heart here just to show that they were in love with each other right so now dushyant loved shakuntala so it's a story of a fisherman i am telling you actually so what happened this raja this uh, king he gives shakuntala a ring a very nice ring okay now this ring this ring i am showing you all these pictures ring i can uh, you know i am indicating now this uh, shakuntala lo- lose this this uh, ring now it goes inside or uh, a fish now this machhuara or the fisherman he grabs this fish and then he got this he re- he uh, retrieves it he goes to the to the to the raja or dushyant but in order to get inside he has to meet chief police officer at the gateway and they were they were not good to him they were very they were not friendly they were very rude to this uh, fisherman but when dushyanta came to know that this fisherman had the ring for the of the woman uh, he loves he just he he became so happy and just reward with money and you know all this thing to fisherman and fisherman gets money now what happened police officer and the gate men who were not hel- helpful or you know do good to him they just went along with him saying can we grab a drink that's what happened along with this we have Fa- fashian we have banabhatta they also gave us various account at that time what was happening the fashian told us or gave us an account about the untouchables achut means they would these untouchables were forced ghettoized ghettoization they would you used to live at the outskirts means they cannot live with the normal people and they would have some ghanti or something to beat so that if somebody is going of, of uh, higher caste hearing the sound that means he would he would avoid touching because he doesn't want to touch these achuts or the 
untouchable at that time banavata also said us about the king's army when they were moving the king in travel with lot of equipments everything was there you know and everyone was happy or tried to show that they were happy but when the king king army leave it was all nothing but dust they would destroy elephant elephants and horses they would destroy the huts of villagers so it was just dust as banavata said now at that time a very important thing uh, we noticed and that was, that came into being i'll talk about this in 4 5 minutes of a video but because i need to complete this chapter i'll just uh, tell you what they have gi given us so i am talking about arab area saudi arab bahrain qatar you know all these uh, iran iraq all these are called arabian countries so a new religion 1400 years back a new religion called as islam prophet muhammad introduced this religion called islam in arabia okay same as we talked about in christianity Islam is a very very good religion. Very very, I'm telling you that that thing. Islam uh, has Allah, the top topmost is the God, and they talked about equality and unity. Allah, the topmost, the only God, only one God, Allah. So various things they said, and it's so clean and so you know good religion, because every religion talk about what happiness, love. helping others doing nothing bad that's what every religion says islam also says the same thing see 2.3 billion people are christians 1.7 billion are muslims so this is the second largest religion of the world and this is islam spread everywhere africa north africa spain iran india and then arab soldiers came to sindh also that is our nearby area that is how we see pakistan and afghanistan they have mostly muslim religion people so i'll tell talk about this islam later on but uh, our discussion is over thank you so much take care of yourself